Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 31. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at something called player press which will allow us to save which level we are on. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. For those of you who are new to Unity, and this is perhaps your first series or anything you've seen on development, you've probably never heard of the term player prefs. Player prefs are a way of being able to store certain information inside an external, you could call it a variable theoretically, and being able to recall that information even when Unity has been closed down. So, for example, we have uh, in our scripts, we've used the word static. And when we use the word static, uh, the script retains the information that it's fed even on different scenes and at any point while the application is still running. When the application is closed, that, that information disappears. So we want to retain that information even when the application has been closed down, and that's what player prefs are. In its simplest terms, we're able to set integers and load integers. And that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're going to set some integers into Unity so it knows how to handle the different levels that we have. So there are certain things as well we have to keep note of. When we create a new player pref, that information is set as zero. It's always going to be zero. And we can use that to our advantage later on in development. So firstly, let's go to the floor complete and let's load up that floor complete script. This is where we're going to actually start working with player prefs. There are a couple of different ones that we need to create, and it probably is wise as well just to kind of make a note of what they are. Even though we're able to describe them and actually give them a proper real life name, it's also worth kind of remembering what they are, so adding a little annotation to that. So when we have completed our floor, um, let's say as soon as we've started fading out, we want to be able to save the fact that we've completed that floor. So I'm going to leave a couple of lines there under fade out dot set active in the coroutine. And we are now going to type player prefs dot set int. And in brackets, we now need to put what we want to call it. And we can call it anything, literally anything we want. But it's obviously wise to give it um, a meaningful term. So I'm going to put this as scene to load. And that is going to store what scene we're going to load. So like I say, we've completed floor one. That's all good. Let's say we close the application down. When we click load game on the main menu, we want to go to scene, two, or rather floor two, which is actually going to be whatever we set next floor as. So in hindsight, it's probably wise to move this line of code from that section there down, or rather up to here. And we can then put global complete dot uh, next floor close bracket semicolon so what we're saying here is when we've completed our floor and we then add one to the floor we're going to we then save it externally into that player pref that is the most important bit because even if we don't get even if we don't get past this section here we instantly close our game we're still going to be able to get to the next uh, floor because we've saved it. So that's how we set the integer, but there's also other ones we need to set as well. We're going to need to save our lives as well. I guess you could also even save your ammo if you wanted to, but let's let's do a couple of things here. So let's say player prefs dot set int and in brackets let's save our lives. So let's have lives saved and then comma, and then we're going to have to put, um, if I can remember, I think it's global life, isn't it? So global life dot life value. So we've now saved that value into a player pref so we can reload it at any time. 
Uh, what else can we try? Uh, let's save our score. So player prefs dot set int and in brackets and quotes let's have score saved and we'll have global score dot score value semicolon and finally let's save our ammo so player preps dot set int and in brackets let's say ammo saved uh, we have to actually set it don't we <laughs> global ammo dot handgun ammo and to be honest i'm not sure why we ever called it handgun ammo because ammo is the same in wolfenstein 3d if you remember ammo is the same for any gun it really doesn't make a difference so i guess the term handgun ammo is kind of moot at this point so when we complete our level that's our save file we've effectively created a save file with those four lines of code so i'm going to save that scene now and we theoretically won't be able to see anything with any of this because there's no way of seeing what is inside a player pref unless you load that player pref in. And I'm trying to think the best way we can get around this because I don't want this tutorial to go on too long, but I don't want to bore you to death. Uh, but what we can do is let's actually also look at resetting some of these player prefs. Um, in this tutorial because I, th I think sometimes you know you've played the game you want to delete your save so you can play it all over again i know my son does that so let's head to our main menu next if we can uh main menu and if you remember a couple of tutorials ago when we created that panel we had the reset button so this reset button is going to come in very handy to reset everything and we can do that inside the menu control. So let's go in the menu control script. And we're going to have a couple of things here. So inside the menu control, let's have a method just for that button. So public void reset game, open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, what I intend to do here is to make sure everything is going to work as intended we're going to reset those player prefs and then send ourselves back to that splash screen to reload the main menu just in case it's, it's good practice i would think at least to kind of reload a scene so we're going to say when we reset the game uh, i guess you could add a warning in here if you wanted to an, an extra ui panel obviously using the same kind of mechanics that we've already set up you can obviously do that i'm not going to i'm just going to go straight into resetting but maybe you kind of should have a little warning there and all we're going to do is in that section there we are going to go to is it called no floor complete isn't it and i'm going to copy those lines of code and go back to uh, the main menu nope not splash to menu uh, main menu control and in here rather than have these here i'm simply going to set them as zero 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 and zero so if you ever need to reset the player press for whatever reason you can do it here obviously once we've reset we are going to say scene manager dot load scene and in brackets, I think it's four, isn't it, for the splash screen? Let's quickly check because we don't want to make any mistakes. Uh, build settings and no, it's zero, isn't it? Obviously, because it's the first one. The credits is scene four. So load scene zero. So let's simulate this now. And let's imagine that we have uh played our game we've done whatever we need to we're you know a couple of levels in and we think right let's reset the game if, if you set the warning message uh, like i suggested then obviously when you click this you will get that warning message but ultimately if you do decide to reset the game play press reset and it sends us back to okay it doesn't because i haven't set the button <laughs> oh dear me Come on, Jimmy, get a grip. So menu controls, 
no function, main menu control, and it's reset game. So now that button does work. So once again, simulate it, play through some levels. We want to reset. You click this, uh, or you can do exact same as me, but ultimately we reset the game. Head back to the splash screen, and then flow through to our main menu, and then we can carry on. So everything is all hunky-dory. Now, uh, the last thing I'm actually going to do is quickly... Um, in fact, I'm going... Before we do anything, I'm going to actually complete the first floor. So as when we go into next tutorial, we're able to actually load something up straight away. <coughs> so let's go to this. No, no, no. There's the key. I'm really, I really am keen to see what you guys have created with this series so far. Really, really keen to see. So there's that. So at this point, we have definitely saved into our player prefs everything we need to. So let's just see if we go to the next floor, no problem. And there we go. So everything is still good. I can't see any problems so far. So we should now, when we code it, be able to load straight into the second floor. So we've learned a little bit about player press today, one half of it. And obviously player press can apply to things like, well, obviously integers, uh, decimal numbers, floats, strings as well. Um, obviously strings will come in very handy if you're trying to save certain amounts of text rather than numbers. So uh, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to look at creating a load game button that actually works. So we're going to be able to load whatever scene we have saved at. And we'll probably also look at uh, the credits scene as well. Um, I think there's probably two tutorials left in this series now. So we're kind of getting right towards the end. And it definitely is at this point, you guys, start refining what you've got because we've learned all about we can learn uh, for this style of game so anyway until that next tutorial when we learn loading thanks very much for watching